Dwayne Wade and his family fled Florida over fears about what would happen to his transgender daughter, that is his biologically male son. We would not be accepted or feel comfortable there. NBA legend Dwayne Wade reveals his family fled Florida because his transgender daughter no longer felt safe under the state's anti-LGBTQ policies. I have a lot of thoughts on this, really. I was watching a video from uh, Clown World on Twitter, and there's a question, a, a, a question I had when there was this one guy talking about trans kids, and I said, where were the trans kids 20 years ago? I mean, I, a serious question. Where were they 20 years ago? Now, there are many people who are adults in their 30s who are trans and older. So where were they? Is what I'm asking. I'm not saying they didn't exist. I'm saying, like, what was going on in their lives when they could not transition? In the 90s, there was some effort in this direction because hormones existed. And this stuff probably existed into the 80s. But let's go back even further. Let's ask the real question. In the year 1900, where were the transgender people? Did they exist? Well, I, I, I mean it quite literally. What's the argument from the left? Is it that they did, but there was no means because no technology, so they just felt pain and dysphoria and there was nothing to do about it and technology was invented to treat that? Is that the argument? I'd assume that's what they'd argue. Let's read the news here. NBA legend Dwayne Wade has revealed that he and his family left Florida due to what he claims are restrictive policies that infringe on the rights of LGBTQ people. The former Miami Heat star has four children, including 15-year-old daughter Zaya, who came out as transgender in 2020. I got to stop there because this language is confusing to people. It's a 15-year-old male child who came out as transgender. She has since legally changed her name and gender, with Wade being outspoken in support of her. The three-time NBA champion had Zaya with his high school sweetheart and first wife, Siobhan Fun uh, Fun Fun Funches, in 2007 before his marriage to Gabrielle Union. He has spoken about the need to accept and embrace people for who they are, regardless of their gender identity, et cetera, et cetera. Now, there's some interesting questions here. This is, uh, this is Dwayne Wade's male child, who is uh, not identifying as a, a, a woman, still male, though. There are questions I have for the right and the left. Uh, let, me, let me play this clip for you, actually. I think we can play this clip. Is there any sound? State legislators who- Here we go. I'll start over. What do you have to say to some of those state legislators who maybe have your jersey in their closets, who came and brought their kids to your game to yeah. cheer for you? Um, well, you know, I think that's, that's, that's another reason why I don't live in this state. A lot of people don't know that. I have to make decisions for my family, um, not just personal individual decisions. I mean, obviously the taxes is great. Okay. You know, having Wade County is great. But my family ain't, ain't, would not be accepted or feel comfortable there. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why I don't live there. OK, well, sure. I wonder what this will lead to in terms of polarization in this country with people of varying ideologies going to different places. Here's what I think. Um, yeah, I don't care if Dwayne Wade's kid wants to be a woman and get surgery and do all that stuff. You know, like ideologically, I do care. I want this kid to grow up and be happy. I want them to live a good life. I want humans to thrive and succeed. I suppose if you want to sterilize your child and your child wants to be sterilized, I don't know what else I can say to that. The end result will just be a more conservative future. And it almost makes me feel like Bill Gates and Klaus Schwab and the Davos group just despise liberals and what people refer to as NPCs. I think about it like a sheep and a shepherd. A shepherd tends to his flock of sheep, but eventually leads the sheep to their, well, I mean, to be consumed or to harvest their wool or whatever. The sheep don't know what's going on, don't know, or think about it like cattle. Cattle live good lives, beef cattle. And then one day they go into a machine and they're dead. They don't even realize what happened. Then we eat them and it's just over. So right now I look at what's happening in this world and I see sheeps and shepherds. I know it's not sheeps, calm down. And I wonder if people like Dwayne Wade are just sheep, right? The, the machine goes to them and tells them to sterilize their children. And they say, OK, Isn't that kind of a screwed up thing to tell someone. Have you considered sterilizing your kids? Might make them feel better. Have you considered aborting your kids? Hmm. Maybe you'll live a better life, have more money for you. It does not seem like something you would tell someone you care about. So that's interesting. Conservatives begging the left 
to not sterilize their kids and not to abort their kids. And the left adamant they must. So when I look at the policymakers, when I look at people like Wade and what he flees to, he is fleeing to a place that perceivably hates him and his children, despises and hates and loathes. So when Ron DeSantis says, you can't do this to your kids, and they say, but we want to, it seems like Ron DeSantis is trying to protect them. It's a challenge, isn't it? The sheep being convinced by the wolves to go run off into the wilderness where they'll eventually just die out. But I do have some questions for the right, because in Florida, they passed a bill saying that you have to use the bathroom that corresponds to your biological sex. And I think that's problematic as well. And don't get me wrong. You don't want to see like a six foot three male or a morbidly obese, you know, pedophile looking dude going in the girl's bathroom. But what about someone like Blair White or Buck Angel, who uh, are, are great people? And um, I've never met Buck Angel, but Blair White, of course, a great friend of the show. But there are many people uh, like Buck Angel's very much spoken out against a lot of the really awful components of what's been going on in, in the culture wars. For those that are familiar, Buck Angel is a big, burly looking, masculine female. Looks like a biker dude, you know, this big ripped six foot something dude walking into a, well, I don't know if Buck Angel's six foot, but like, you know, a very masculine looking manly individual walking into a woman's bathroom is going to cause problems. Blair White going in the men's room is probably going to cause issues. So like, how do we actually navigate this? Cassandra Fairbanks says you should just go to the bathroom for what you look like the most and try and mind your own business. But in Florida, they're also creating unisex bathrooms, too, to alleviate that issue. That says to me, the fact that they've created an option, unisex bathrooms, bathrooms will be labeled, solves the problem. I look at someone like DeSantis, I look at Florida, and what do I see? Conservatives care about helping these people and about creating a real solution to the issue of the bathrooms. Not just to ban someone saying you can't use the bathroom, but be like, okay, well, we, we did a third one then that anybody can use that way. No one's being deprived, right? But the left isn't satisfied by this. They want to sterilize their kids. So they will take their kids and they will flee the state. What happens when you get a mother in Florida who wants to castrate her son and flees and goes to a state like, I don't know, Washington or Colorado, where they're going to sterilize the child? Something I've talked about many times. What can a father do if his son's been taken from him and they're going to sterilize that kid? This is the nightmare scenario that I think leads to conflict and potentially some kind of civil war, because we now have stories of prominent individuals fleeing states. I got another question for our good friend Ron DeSantis. Why haven't you prosecuted the family of Jazz Jennings, the mother and the father? Jazz needs to be rescued from this. Because I don't know if the conviction is really there to actually do it, but I tell you what, it should happen. But it probably would lead to conflict as well. If Ron DeSantis did the right thing and brought criminal charges, his administration, his uh, his attorney general brought criminal charges against the mother of Jazz Jennings for the crimes she's committed, the left would lose it. And they would say he's now seeking to arrest families who provide gender affirming care to their to their loved ones. But the reality is Jazz Jennings mother has been deeply abusive. What do you do? Sit back and do nothing? Or do you say now is the time to make this change and actually start enforcing the law? Either way, it seems like conflict is on the horizon. And that's my concern here. Perhaps the best thing is for people like Dwayne Wade to flee the state and take his kids with him so that there is no conflict. The best thing would be for Jazz Jennings' mother to just take the family and get out of Florida. Because we don't want fighting, we don't want conflict. But then there's the real question about legality. If Jazz Jennings' mother really is committing crimes, then they should not be allowed to just leave the state and get away with those crimes. So what do we do? I don't have the answers for you, my friends. What I do think is that many of these young people, it's, 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 it's going to be interesting when you have prominent people like Dwayne Wade having a child who transitions, probably now sterile, especially if they, un if, if they undergo what they call uh, bottom surgery, then definitely unable to have kids. What are these people going to be saying in their 20s? I don't know. One of the reasons I think the left is so hell bent on transitioning kids at a young age is to make sure they don't have any sexual desires. It's almost like the end goal is just to do away with people they deem stupid, which is why I think Bill Gates and Klaus Schwab, the World Economic Forum, they despise liberals. They're just more evil than you. 
While conservatives despise liberals, they don't want them to die. But the powerful elites despise liberals and are trying to convince them to end themselves. It's creepy, isn't it? I'll leave it there. Next segment is uh, tonight at 8 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcast IRL. But check out the Culture War podcast at youtube.com slash timcast for the latest episode. Thanks for hanging out. and We'll see you all next time.